Hey everyone, how's it going? Hi. <laughs> um, we are excited to make this video because there was there was a lot of exciting um action over the weekend, back from the break, from the big holiday break. Two specific exciting games. And Sarah was extra excited on Saturday. My breakfast burrito. <laughs> yes. Hey. We're, we'll start about the games talking about the game today, and then we'll go on to the game that happened Saturday. So it'll be a little reverse. But uh <laughs> It was Derby Day. Arsenal v Chelsea. All eyes were on this game today. It was at the Emirates. And I believe I read 46, 41 or 46,000 people went to go see this game. Wow. And this is the game everyone looks forward to all year. You know, when they do play um, Arsenal versus Chelsea. This is the game everyone wants to see. Everyone gets pumped for. Everyone, all eyes are on. You know, even if you're kind of a casual fan, this is the game you will watch. So we're super excited to watch this game. And, you know, people are back from break. And, you know, sometimes when you have your holidays and your festivities, you know. It's almost like when you're at school and there's a break and you're away from your friends and everyone. And then you come back and like, whoa, who got a new haircut? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you get for Christmas? Yeah. So everyone was super, super pumped to watch this game. I'm going to be 100%. I didn't watch the whole game in full. I watched a lot. I watched a lot of it. But um, it was... It was a heartbreaking game for Arsenal because by all accounts, not only did they play better, you know, the whole thing, should, should they have won? Chelsea has this knack for not playing great and then ending up with a win still. They're a great yeah. team, but they do have a knack for at the last minute pulling around, which makes you a great team, you know? First, I mean, even just talking about first half, no one scored in the first half. Arsenal, you know, they played better overall. They were playing better. I guess we're not going to talk a lot about the game, but I guess the things that we're going to talk about, the things that were pretty significant. And I think this was this was the play we're going to talk about that everyone is talking about. In the 57th minute, there was a there was a foul call that led to a PK. Caitlin Ford goes down and they call it they call it for a PK, you know, a spot kick, as they call it over there. Ooh. And <laughs> a lot of people are questioning that. Um, not to say anyone is right or wrong. I mean, the ref makes the decision, but a lot of people said it looked outside of the box rather than inside the box. And people are saying that they think it was an unfair. What do you guys think? Was this a, a do you think this should have been a PK? The one thing I will read, and I see this, I saw this on Twitter. On Arsenal penalty, referee gave it gave it for the tangle of legs in the box. My opinion was the foul was was the nudge in the back from Charles, which was outside. The contact carried on inside, but it depends what you deem as a foul. Subjective one, I'm not I'm not sure VAR would have overturned it. And I thought that was interesting that this person said they're not sure VAR would have overturned it if there were to be VAR. And I think a lot of people thought it wasn't a foul, but that's a good point. Maybe, maybe even if a lot of people thought it wasn't, they would still say the contact went inside and the tangled legs and everything that VAR wouldn't have overruled that. So, so I mean, what did everyone think about that? Did you think it was? I mean, we always talk about these on our channel and then it's kind of like just the ref made the decision. So it's kind of pointless what anyone thinks, you know, or it's kind of, well, oh, it's Marty McFly, this mother and <laughs> go back. back to the future. It will go back in time. Yeah. And so that was the, 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 probably the most significant play because Arsenal was playing better. They had been playing better the whole match. And then that just kind of reinforced that said, okay, Arsenal looks like they're going to win. Arsenal is playing really well. Um, it's looking good. And then the, one of the criticisms I saw uh, uh, going into the match, you know, a lot of people have a, a lot of people don't like Jonas's coaching style, but a lot of people say Jonas has this problem with not putting subs in. Like he's against subs. He has so many subs and a lot of times he doesn't use them. What subs ever do to him? And, and then I was on Instagram. It was a, this is basically one of the comments of many that I saw. Does Jonas know how to make changes? We have three strong attacking players to bring on, and he doesn't even think. Stina, Caitlin, and Frida look exhausted. I'm frustrated with the results. Should do better. Okay, so I'm bringing this up even before we get to the Sam Kerr goal, only because a lot of people said Arsenal's looking good, but their front three were gassed. They were tired. Yeah. They looked like they needed a break. a break because they were playing well. But when you're playing a team like Chelsea, they're a strong team. You know, even if they're not playing the best in this game, it's still Chelsea. Why not make those subs? That's what a lot of people think. And this one goes, does Jonas know he can sub five players? <laughs> that was a very big theme. Then I guess I'll go into this. That was kind of a reverse. But 
89th minute, there was a, a cross to Sam Kerr, puts a header in. I mean, if Sam Kerr, I saw that heard the commentators, if Sam Kerr did nothing the whole game, <laughs> gets <laughs> one header and scores, the, scores in the 89th minute. Oh, man. I and mean, that was a goal. Classic I mean, Sam header. Yes, it was such a nice goal. Sam doing Sam thing. Yes, I mean, that it was, was beautiful. Good. It was beautiful in Ugh, the. That was hot. In the 89th minute, she she scores to for the equalizer, and you know, it looked like it was gonna be an Arsenal win. Even after Arsenal was playing really well, Sam goes there and scores. Chelsea was not playing well. They were playing mediocre. They weren't playing very well. That one play at the end of the game, one of the commentators. She said that definitely Arsenal was a way better team. But even though they were the better team at the end of the game, there was there was a lack of concentration in the back for Arsenal. And then Leah Williamson should have been on Sam Kerr. She wasn't. And at the at the end of the team huddle, even Leah Williamson said, apparently you could see that she was saying, I take responsibility for that goal. I, I you know, it was my bad, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, So she I guess she felt bad. But I mean, that's all it took. And that was the game to be a, to be a tie, you know, to be a draw. But um, most people are saying Arsenal should have won that game. Arsenal should have won that game. You know, going back to where we're talking about Jonas. So I wonder what his strategy is for not pulling in more subs. I wonder if he's thinking, oh, you know, they're doing well. Why, why mess up the flow of things? Why, you know? Right. What the hell is that Jonas stressed watching that second half playing like we're leading 4-0? Um, yeah, I mean, he, maybe he didn't think, uh, yeah, oh, I want to hear what everyone out there thinks. Why, what would be the reasoning you think Jonas wouldn't want to use his subs? Like Sarah said, maybe that he doesn't want the flow to really get, uh, doesn't want it to turn bad. You know, sometimes when you get a different, a different flow, then it actually could go bad. Stina, Caitlin, and Frida are amazing, but after 70 slash 80 minutes, it's exhausting, especially against a team like Chelsea. We had perfect strong players on the bench that we could have used toward the 20 slash 30 or so minutes. Hopefully next time Jonas utilizes all the talent we have on this team. Yeah, and that's a big takeaway. I saw a lot of comments saying, you know, they're disappointed that they should have won. They didn't. Chelsea did not play a good game at all. It was a stinker. One of the commentators said they played a stinker of a game. Not a great match. Um, Sam Kerr didn't do anything until she scored that point. That was till, until she scored that goal. That was it. One the, the one really, really big highlight for Chelsea was their goalie. Musovic. Musovic. The goalie for Chelsea was making some amazing saves. Um, and that was the one really, really big highlight for Chelsea. It could have been a big, it could have been a way different result if she didn't make all the saves she did because it, it, she was saving a lot of balls, yeah. a lot of good strikes, um, and she looked really good out there. And that was definitely a very big bright spot for Chelsea. So that was good to see. I mean, not good for Arsenal, but... <laughs> But Arsenal fans are pretty bummed that it looked like it was going to be a win and then it was a draw. And a lot of people, you know, I, you know, blaming Jonas, you know, blaming Jonas. Is that, you know, is that how you do it? Is that helpful to blame Jonas? But sure, why not? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> his strategy doesn't make a, it doesn't make sense to people, sense to a lot of people who are very knowledgeable about sports, like sports <laughs> and soccer. They, they're kind of saying the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it was a tie. It was a draw. And Arsenal did look good, though. That, you know, that was a good takeaway. Mm -hmm. Chelsea didn't look great. And 89th minute. Oof, that's rough. And it's funny because I'm a Sam Kerr fan. I, I root more for Arsenal than I would Chelsea. But I am a Sam Kerr fan. <laughs> so I was yeah. happy for her. But uh, like someone says right here, frustrating. Frustrating. Because, you know, they want. So, I mean, what did everyone think of that match? Are you an Arsenal fan and now and are, we're just gutted by that result? You know, at Emirates. But what did everyone think? So they end up with a draw and uh, we will see what happens going forward. Uh, but that was an exciting game. Also, um, at that game, there were, they had a very special guest at that game. They had Madonna. No, not Madonna. Oh, Prince William. No, not Prince William. Oh. Close. Prince Harry and Meghan. No, not them either. They had Jordan Nobbs, and she was a special guest there. And so she watched. She was there watching the game, and she actually at halftime, 
she came down and they had um, a tribute to her and a, you know, they honored her for being with Arsenal so, so long, kind of like a little bit of a send off too, because as we know, when she left Arsenal, you know, no one knew her last game was going to be her last game. Right. And I think a lot of people are kind of bummed. They didn't know when her last game was going to be her last game. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, you want to know when it's someone's last game so you can really go out and honor them. But that's what they did today at halftime. And that's I even, nice. yeah, I even saw saw on twitter somebody showed a picture of their um their, their program for the the game and it had like a big page uh dedicated kind of like to jordan dedicated to jordan kind of a send-off and oh, kind sweet. of like yeah tribute to jordan so arsenal fans did get to have you know more of a proper send-off it was definitely very very sweet and very cool to see her there she's an arsenal for life she's part of arsenal for life so it was really great to see her there so what did everyone think about the sunday festivities uh over at the emirates so speaking of jordan and um her tribute you know her debut with aston villa was on, on saturday Saturday. Yes. So she played her very first game with Aston Villa on Saturday. And first and foremost, Sarah was waking me up very early asking me how to get into the FA player on our iPad. Cause <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to watch it. And I would have checked in sooner because actually I got up very early on Saturday, but um, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so she woke me up because I was still sleeping. And so you caught a little bit the end of I it. I did. Yeah. Probably last 15 minutes or so. Yeah, so I don't remember. Sarah was watching with her, her and her breakfast burrito. Yeah, and my coffee. And her coffee. And she was watching. So she was, you were excited to watch. I was. So that was really exciting to see. So um, we I didn't really watch much of the game. I saw a couple highlights, but they won Aston Villa. It was 2-1 Aston Villa. And yeah. they played, so they played the Spurs. And... Good game. I like I said, I didn't watch, but Aston Villa. Most people, I was looking on Twitter to see what people thought, and most people are so pumped. Game was excited. The game was great. Uh, Spurs kind of struck first. Beth England making her debut with Spurs, scored in the twenty eighth minute. Yeah, so many debuts. Yes, and then uh, Aston Villa scored in the thirty fourth minute, and then Rachel Daly scored in the thirty eighth minute. So. That was the game winner, technically, in the 38th minute. They won, and everyone, basically, I saw everyone thought Jordan Obbs looked great. You know, I was reading some comments on Instagram, on Twitter, saying, you know, Jordan Obbs actually isn't used to playing a full 90 much. She didn't play a full 90, but to get her, her stamina to a full 90... Jordan Nobbs was used to playing 60 minutes max for the last season and a half. It would take a bit to build 90 minutes fitness. Still very pleased with what I saw from her. Playing for, with energy and freedom again. Very excited for her and Villa. Yeah, and then she, but she looked really good. I mean, she's, she's already making an impact. Also, Lucy Staniforth made her debut too. I watched Villa women today and the first half was the best I've seen them. Jordan Nobbs and Lucy Staniforth fitted in like they've been here ages. Tenza Dolly running the show and Rachel Daly showing she's the best forward in the league. Great football and a great result. Yeah, so a lot of people liked what they saw. Even I was on this uh, website that I saw. Birmingham Live, I think the website is? Or I'm not actually quite sure. But they were rating the players, and they said right here, Jordan Nobbs. First chance of the game fell to one of Villa's new signings just outside the and the area and she set herself well but there wasn't enough power on it and it was comfortably saved by the Tottenham keeper booked for a trip just outside the box second half a solid debut eight out of ten yeah she did get a booking so she did get a yellow card which is initiated she's officially an Aston Villa player because she has gotten a yellow card <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, so she's officially in the club. It obviously, hopefully next initiation will be her goal, but she got a yellow card. Um, she's she's ready to go. So <laughs> people were pumped to see her. She looked great. Lucy Staniforth looked great. Um, Aston Villa looked really good. They're going to be a team to beat, you know? But what did everyone think about seeing Jordan Nobbs out there? The one thing, um, very special thing Jordan Nobbs did do at the game is that she paid tribute to... Beth Mead's mother, who unfortunately did pass away on January 7th. And you know, I think most fans knew kind of the, you know, Beth's mom had been sick for a while. Jordan had her shirt and it was kind of like her undershirt. And it said, it said for June. It's heartbreaking. And all it seems like a lot of Jor uh, Beth's friends are there for Beth at this time. And that's mm -hmm. absolutely heartbreaking. And also I did see that 
on the Instagram for Sunday's game. There was tributes on Arsenal's Instagram. It said, for you, June Mead. And there was a picture of them with the sun coming through. It was really pretty. And then there was another picture where it looked like the Arsenal men's team had a shirt yeah. that said, thinking of you, Beth. So it was very, very emotional, very emotional. I know that, you know, anyone who's lost their mom, it's even most people know who watched my station or this channel. My mom passed away a year and a half ago. It kind it just fundamentally changes you, it changes you as a person. Uh, maybe not for everyone, but I know, for, you know, so many people tell me, you know, they, their mom passed away 30 years ago and it's like it's yesterday. So I was so sorry for Beth and, you know, it's, it's horrible. I mean, just going through it not that long ago, it's absolutely horrible. And, but it, Beth has such good friends. I saw how many people were making posts uh, for her mom, for her mom. And Beth has a lot of, she has a really tight knit family and a lot of friends. So yeah, did see special. that. And it was very sweet of uh, Jordan to put that, um, and, you know, in honor of June on her, her shirt like that. But yeah, very sad. Ugh, it's just, it's the worst. But uh, what did everyone think? Exciting weekend. Those two games in particular were the ones Sarah and I were on the lookout for. Great game today. Um, and fun game yesterday. I mean, Aston Villa, It's everyone's talking about them. Yeah, you missed out, Sarah. I did, I did. You, know, you missed out on the burritos, the coffees, <laughs> and the early game. So, yeah, what did everyone think? What did everyone think about Arsenal? And did you think that was a – did you think that should have been a PK? What did you think? I, it looked outside the box, but if they, you know, people are saying, well, maybe you had the tangled legs. Uh, what did everyone think about Sam Kerr's 89th minute header that, you know, she just does it. Beautiful. Sam Kerr finds the back of the net when she needs to a lot of times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then what did everyone think? Tottenham uh, versus Aston Villa. Aston Villa looks ex exciting, exciting team. So pumped to watch them throughout the season. Question comments down below. What does everyone think? Um, and we will be back. Um, I don't know when the U.S. Women's National Team plays on. It's even the 17th or 18th because New Zealand is a as a day ahead. So I'm mm. actually not quite sure. <laughs> how, do we, how does time even work? I know. I know. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, comments down below. We'll talk to everyone later. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.